Good morning, everybody. Thank you for attending this uh, very interesting session. And for those who don't know me, um, I am originally from Brazil. I have been living in the States for over 20 years, but I came from Brazil. And when you say you come from Brazil, people think, Oh, Rio de Janeiro, it's so beautiful, the beaches, the mountains. Or they think about the jungle, the Amazon. And uh, I was asked many years ago if we had credit cards in Brazil. And my answer was, I don't live in the jungle. I have never been to one. So it's said that people have a narrow view of Brazil. They also think about carnival. We have a party life in Brazil, that's true. We are very happy people. And then several times recently, I was asked about the City of God, it's a movie. I don't remember when it came out and I have never watched because uh, Brazil is portrayed only um, about its poverty and violence. It doesn't show anything good about the country. But guess what? Concrete. I was asked about concrete and I never expected. Um, I would say over 15 years ago, or I would say more close to 20 years ago, somebody asked me, why is the splitting tensile strength test uh, called Brazilian test. First of all, I even didn't know it was called the Brazilian test. Um, let's have a game here. Uh, name the food. We call this the Danish, and I doubt in Denmark they call it Danish. These are the English muffins. I don't know if in England they call it English muffins. The Swiss cheese, the same thing. Then the Swedish meatballs, the Greek yogurt. I have been to Greece and the Greek yogurt doesn't look like that and they don't call Greek yogurt. Oh, French fries, definitely. Not even created in France. And the French bread that here looks like this. In Brazil, it looks completely different. So I wonder which one is the French bread and French toasts, and you name it. One uh, that I know it's called American cheese here too, but other than that, uh, we name things after countries and in their own countries, they are not called by that name. Um, some examples of Brazilian things uh, that are called as Brazilian, and in Brazil, we don't call them Brazilian. Nuts. Somebody asked me about nuts. And the first thing I saw, I thought was, what, crazy people? No, they were talking about this kind of nuts. And we have a different name for that. And then wax, Brazilian wax. Um, I will tell you the truth. I had no clue what it could be. And I had to ask a, a professional to tell me exactly what a Brazilian wax is. And then the Brazilian test. Let's talk about how it was created. There was a church called Church of St. Peter of Clerics built in, 17, in the 1730s in Rio de Janeiro. It was a colonial Baroque style, so, uh, very ornamented and was included in the, on the National Historical and Artistic Heritage list in Brazil in, this, in 1938. Here where it was, I, I highlighted in blue and I'm showing Avenida Rio Branco or Rio Branco Avenue just to get us um, just we can understand what it was in relation to the other pictures I will show. Uh, during the World War II, Brazil was growing very fast. 
it was a country like US is today receiving or has been for several decades, lots of immigrants, um, a promising country, um, growing really fast. And we participated on, in the World War II, but it wasn't in Brazil. It was in Europe. So we used that time to grow. Rio was the capital of the country at that time. And when you have huge growth, you always see the construction booming. So here is Rio Branca Avenue that I showed previously, and I tried to highlight the church over here. Because of the growth, they wanted to create larger roads and avenues, and they planned to have uh, an avenue here named after the president. So it would be the future uh, President Vargas Avenue. But what happened here? The church is just blocking the construction of the avenue. Another view of the church and the avenue construction. Bottom line, the construction needed to be, sorry, the church needed to be demolished. But there was another solution. How about if the church was moved to the side of the new avenue? Uh, it was a technique used previously many times in Europe, and they would put some steel rollers underneath the construction and move the whole structure. But at that time, during the war, war it still was produced mainly for military purposes. It would be really hard, almost impossible, to get some steel rollers. And this guy, a young engineer, um, has a very long name. Uh, he is known as Lobo Carneiro, and if you translate his name, it's very funny because it's wolf and sheep, but his first name is Fernando. He thought, um, how about if instead of using the steel rollers, we use concrete rollers of 24 inches diameter? He used to work at that time um, at the Institute of Technology, and he was used to performing concrete research. His steel rollers were calculated using the Hertz equation. Here is the equation, and it considers uh, the two surfaces, the contact area of the two surfaces. The, elastic models of them. But there was no equation to calculate concrete rollers. Lobo Carneiro was involved in concrete pavement design at that time that required uh, tensile strength. Uh, but direct tensile strength test was very, difficult to run, it is still difficult to run, and it wasn't uh, feasible. Uh, what he was using was flexure strength test. We still use that for pavement design. Lobo, Lobo Carneiro tried to correlate compressive strength and flexure strength, so he wouldn't even need to use flexure strength, but he wasn't successful. And at that time, the theory, the fracture mechanism theory hadn't been developed, no scaling laws developed, so the whole calculation was kind of difficult. So he got 
16 to 60 centimeters or 24 inch diameter concrete cylinders and decide to test. He applied forces and he, he let me go back. He didn't test the concrete cylinders as we normally do for compressive strength on the vertical push position. He put it on the side, he put the cylinders on sideways and he applied the, the force. And he noticed that the cylinders broke differently than the steel rollers or behaved differently. And a vertical crack developed and the, the cylinder broke into halves. Here is a picture. Uh, of his work. So he had the idea of using the splitting tensile, of making the splitting uh, setup into a splitting tensile strength, but instead of using the 24 inch cylinder, he decided to use 15 inches uh, cylinder, sorry. 15 centimeters or six inch cylinders instead. It was a simple uh, test and for unif uniformity of uh, uh, load application, he proposed to use uh, a strip at the bottom, at the top of about 0.1 uh, diameter. And he determined the tensile strength limit using a simple equation based on elasticity theory. Here is a screenshot of uh, his work, what he published. And what he is comparing here is the effect of different strip uh, width. Here, this one is 0.1 of the diameter. This one is 0 0.05 of the diameter. So he came up with this equation for the tensile strength, which is a very easy equation to be used. He also determined the normal compressive stress. And then you ask me, or you could ask me, well, for the Hertz equation, you are using uh, the contact area, you are taking into consideration the elastic modules of the two materials. But for compressive strength, sorry, for tensile strength of concrete, you are, you are considering only the diameter. And it's a simplification that would be valid only for concentrated loads or, or if the strips are very, very small in width. But there, there have been lots and lots of work on this test method or this way of testing. Um, and if you look in the literature, there are lots of equations uh, to calculate the tensile strength, taking into consideration that there is a strip here and it's not really a, a load applied in a point. There is a strip that will, uh, dissipate the energy over an area. And the equations are extremely complicated. It's not feasible to use this on a daily basis, on a testing, in a test lab or in our career is much, much more for research purposes. One of the papers um, estimated that if you have a strip here, of about one inch, which is our the strip used in our ASTM C four nine six, and it's much much larger than the originally uh, used by Lobo Carneiro. You would have approximately 0.9 of the real 
tensile strength. In since 2012, estimated that it's about 0.98. So for practical purposes, we don't consider this and we just use the tensile strength as uh, calculated with the diameter. Here is a, a, a chart that shows other researchers using similar equations and calculating the normal stresses and the tensile stress. And they got pretty close to what Lobo Carneiro calculated and suggested. But it all started with the church. What happened to the church? Well, Lobo Carneiro wrote a report. And in that report, he mentions that the church walls, although very thick, over three feet of thickness, they were very fragile and heterogeneous. There were pieces of wood inside, uh, statues. Uh, and because of that, there was a very uh, big possibility that the church walls would crack during the relocation. Uh, the local government then hired European, European engineers, sorry for the typo here, uh, to oversee the relocation. But they wanted the engineers to guarantee that everything would be successful, the, the church wouldn't collapse, and it was a political matter, so everything had to go very smoothly. But the engineers, European engineers, could not guarantee that nothing would happen. And in 1944, the church was demolished, unfortunately. We don't have the church, but we have the Brazilian test. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? So one, <clears throat> one quick question is, what is your impression about how widespread this test is being used? Oh, it's the main test for, for tensile strength all over the world. Um, in the same year that he presented uh, in Riley, 47, just after that, a Japanese researcher also published a very similar test for tensile strength of concrete. And they didn't communicate at all because it was war and Brazil was one side in one side of the war and Japan was in the other side. Uh, but because Lobo, Lobo Carneiro presented first, it became the, it was nicknamed Brazilian test. I believe nowadays nobody calls it the Brazilian test. It's not published as the Brazilian test, but it's the, the most used um, test, a standardized test for splitting the entire strength of concrete because it's easy to calculate, relatively easy to perform uh, in comparison with uh, direct tensile strength. 